So today on this beginner series for Final Cut Pro version 10.3, I'm just going to go through a few notes with regards to using uh, Final Cut Pro effects. So the effects are down here, just on the, the uh, right hand side, just next to our transition. So the first uh, option here is our transitions, the box next to it, it's one rectangle on top of another, are our effects, the installed effects. Um, there's a huge array and I genu genuinely feel like you'd almost need to do a separate video on each effect and how it works because some of them are, are some of them are very advanced, some of them are simple enough but some of them are, have a lot of information and pretty much every single one has a whole different set of instructions up in the inspector. So I'll show you an example of how to apply effects, um, a couple, make a couple of alterations to them but I'm more just going to kind of give you a few tips as to how to use them and a few additional things that, that to, to make note of as you're doing it. So you have this little sub-menu for your effects here, so you've got all video and audio. You've also got all video effects, and then you've also got audio effects. So there's a huge number if you just wanted all the audio, and then even within those, if you know a little bit more about the audio, um, you've got distortion effects, echoes, EQ, levels. And within your video, again, I've, you can, I've imported a few of these, you've got a few kind of plugins and stuff, basics, things like your colour, just uh, some colour effects that you might want to apply. Um, keying, that's where you're working with things like green screen, um, I have like a noise reduction one, certain looks, again that's more of your colours, and tones and things, masks, um, text effects, it's like this, such an, a huge huge array of, um, of effects, we're not going to go through them all, I'm going to go through a couple of basic ones, show you how to apply them and a few things that I've, I've learned that have been really useful. Um, so let's actually go up to a slightly different video just to apply a couple of these effects because I think you'll find it's a little bit useful to see some how, especially some of the colour effects and how they how they function um, which I can't show you on the black and white clips. So with all the effects um, as with our we have it with our skimmer, our skimmer is going to show you as you hover over it um, a sort of little yeah a little preview of the effects and how they how they look and what they do. Um, this will be an interesting one actually with the with the keyer. Let me just throw a little generator underneath so you can see how the keying works. Let's, it's fabric, which doesn't really matter, but it will be useful. So I'm going to select this clip. This is the one I'm going to apply it to. Now the color correction. I think we discussed that in one of the previous weeks. So the color correction it doesn't actually apply anything. This is it's exactly the same as our color correction down here, where we have to show our color board. So it has not made um, a correction to it, but if you want to apply more than one, then you can add them and you can layer them in that way. So let's just undo that. Um, so you've got all these sort of like colorizing ones. You can add 50s TV, add noise, adds a bit of green. Make it look like an old fashioned film, aged paper, blood of glass, artifacts, adding these kind of like, you know, sort of light leak type things. Some of them are completely uh, crazy, some of them are really fun, um, lots of colour ones, and um, okay. So that, yeah, so it's a, lot of, a lot of the effects are sort of colours and things, but there are also some really, really useful ones, cropping ones, letterboxing. Um, so let's start just with the 50 TV first of all, because it's, it's a nice simple one to use. Um, so the way of applying your effects can literally just be a drag and drop, so if I drag this effect and just drop it right on top of the clip, it's going to apply it exactly as it would. So it's sure showing me it just needs a little bit of rendering time. Once you've applied any effect, it appears up in your inspector here in the video portion under effect. So the first one I have already here is color correction, so I've already applied that to my clip. And underneath that then we have our F50s TV. Um, now this one is a very simple effect, it's not very much to do, so it's just basically the amount or the brightness. So you can decide how bright you want that to be and how much that's been applied. So if you don't have very much to apply, it starts to apply a little bit by bit. There's a variety of different effects. That's very extreme. That's really, really high con, very high contrast. It's quite cool though. Um, if you have applied an effect, there's two ways of taking that off if you decide you don't want that. One is just literally to disable it. So if I click this little tick here it's not active, it won't export, it's like it's not there, but it's still there if you decide, no actually I do want it back and you can just retick it. If you decide, absolutely not, I do not want this effect to be there at all, you literally just highlight it so the entire box is highlighted in yellow and just hit the delete key and it will trash it and it's gone. 
never to be seen again. So you've got those effects that you can use. So let's just add another one to show a kind of the range of uh, <laughs> um, manual features that you have. This one's quite an interesting one. If I grab my aged film and drop it on top. Now you can see here, this is a completely different set of instructions and it's very varied. So the amount here right now is 100. You might decide you want it to be a little bit. Different types of grain that you can kind of work with. Um, how many scratches appear on the screen, so that's these lines. I, I'm not such a big fan of those. I tend to take those out and work more with things like dust and kind of hairs that you add to the screen. So I play that. You might be able to see. Kind of just get them looking a little dirtier. Focus variance, it'll go in and out of blur, jitter amount, it's just color variance. I'll just play that now. Get a little moment to render because it's kind of freaking out the amount of instructions I'm giving it. There we go. Let's just play that there. So you can see already that it's got a lot, a lot of things, that can, a lot of options that can be applied to that one. Let's just play that one again. So down to here then, a couple of sort of useful ones that I've found to be quite funny. Things like your letterboxing uh, can be really useful. Drawing masks can be useful for adding things too. But um, where's my, yeah, frame. Well, frame's a bit more ornate sometimes. But um, graduated mask, highlights, letterbox. So letterboxing, if I drag this effect on top of my foot here. Um, no, this actually let's just read us so it doesn't can't see that. So you can see already there's a particular letterbox, a tiny tiny little variation. So your aspect ratio, if you go here, you can apply different types of letterboxes. If I go one to one of these huge, the extreme ones, that's quite an extreme letterbox. Super super widescreen. Some of your standards are around about 185 and 135. They tend to be the ones that people use most of the time for that kind of like filmic widescreen like. I want to work with that. Um, there are a couple of things to note when you're applying these types of things is that the order in which you apply your um, your effects and your and your um, your adjustments it does make a difference because if you apply a letterbox and then apply a different type of effect it can have a can be done in a different order. So let's take off the night vision. Um, so let me just disable letterbox for a moment and I'm going to apply a different effect actually which is going back to one of our transform and crop so I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to move it I'm going to take this clip and actually I'm going to move it down if I then re-enable the letterbox you can see that the letterbox has been applied to the clip and it's come with me so this is where these kind of things start to become a little bit trickier to work with um, so if you're going to apply, if you want to make adjustments like that, there's two sort of ways you can kind of resolve this. I do want my letterbox to be applied, but I want to be able to adjust my clip underneath my letterbox. So you can create, like within your images, like let's say if you wanted, if you wanted a letterbox to be applied to the entire video. Um, Command A, which is to collect everything together, and I'm going to create a new compound clip. Body and clip is fine, within festival. So it's now here. Probably down the bottom. Yep, there we go. So we've got a new compound clip. So what that's done is just like brought everything together. So I double click on the clip here. It's all still there. It's still editable. It's all still within that range. I go back to my previous project, but it's now all within one clip. So any effect that you add to this can now all be applied to everything. So if I go back to my effects and go back to Letterbox and apply that, it's going to Letterbox. And let's get it back to my. Uh, Yeah. Okay, I find my one back to this more intense ratio. So there we go. So that's it's take everything's kind of been moved, but it's applied it to my entire clip now. So I can still make adjustments back into my clip. There's an extra song here that <laughs> I didn't realise was playing. Um, so I can still make adjustments. I might decide actually out with that that some of these clips maybe don't work in that way. So I'm just doing a little bit slow. So like this clip for example, she's kind of a little bit out of the out of the shot. So I'm like sorry, nope, I'm gonna go in there. And I might bring her clip not quite as far down because she's already quite far down herself. So I'm gonna go back to transform, bring her back up, maybe even more like that, maybe I want to see see more of her and then go out 
And there's our, there we go, that looks a little better. So any of these kind of adjustments that you can make, you can make inside the compound clip and then when they're applied, the, the, the effect that you've added is underneath that. Similarly again, you could apply, like if I apply, what's my one? Actually, there's a tile. So if I add a tile on top of this one here, what it's done is it's created a tiled version that is the letterbox of everything. So if I then take this tile actually and move the direction of it, see how it has a completely different effect. And the reason that that's changed is because the tiling portion has been applied to the letterboxed version of the clip. If the tiling is underneath, the tile that I undo the letterbox, the tile has basically been applied to the video, and then the letterbox has been applied on top of that. So the the order that the clips are applied is, is weird. I'd normally have it on top, like thinking that the one on top would be the one that's applied, like layering in the same way the video does, but they have it the other way around. So the one that's underneath is the one that's on top of everything. So if you apply letterbox first and then tile that, it's going to tile with the letterbox. If you bring the tile underneath, the tiles first and then letterbox is that version. So the the um, the order in which you apply the effects is it has an impact and it actually makes a difference as to how your clips are viewed. So it's just kind of something to note. So there's just a few a few different um, elements to be aware of. So grouping things into a compound clip can be, sometimes be quite a good way to apply. Uh, an effect to everything. Um, if you literally want it applied to your to your entire video, and you want everything to have a particular look, the whole video is going to spill. See, that's interesting as well. The heat one. So this is a color correction, and as you can see, it's applied the color correction over the letterbox as well. So if you didn't want that, so it's turned. It's actually turned my my letterbox orange. So if I bring the heat underneath the letterbox, it's applied the visual colors to my video but not to the letterbox. So the order in which the effects are applied is um, definitely has an impact on how they, how they, how they look. Um, the audio effects I'm not going to go into a huge amount. The ones I kind of tend to use most, it can be quite fun, quite fun and quite creative for um, uh, spaces, for example. It, it works in exactly the same way. Let's take my audio track and um, so vintage radios. Lots and lots of different uh, ways you can apply apply your audio effects to various things. Car radio. Let's take off these. Don't need to use any more. Again, lots of different presets and things here and there. Size various amounts of distortion. With well, pretty much with every single audio effect that you'll apply, you'll be given an entirely different um, sound soundboard to work with. My levels literally any one of these going to give you some more to work with that is totally different. Oh, those ones aren't so different. <laughs> Let's try on my echo ones. Uh, so you get like every effect has a totally different sound board. So if you're, if you're familiar with working with sounds and want to play with those, there is a huge range to work with. Same as with all the effects. I said there's one more effect I want to go into briefly, which is just to show you the key here. Uh, where did I apply this one? It's my fabric. So we have these lovely uh, keying effects, which is where you work with. Um, essentially, you can do the, the sort of green screen idea, or you can have your kind of lunar keyers. So I wonder if you're showing through it's the one I want to apply it to. Okay, and it hasn't applied it by default, which is interesting. So let's just take my keyer over actually and drop it. There we go. So that one there you can see it's taken the fabric that's underneath and it's keyed out this image here. So your keying effect, it's an interesting one, you can have a lot of, a lot of fun with that. Um, it hasn't quite worked the way I wanted it to. So you can take that sort of down and do your sample colour option. There we go. So if you wanted like her, this is the way you wrote for things like green screen. Instead of her cape being made of what it was, it's being made with my fabric, or it just looks black. If I take another generator underneath, let's try metal. So I'll take my metal underneath and have her wings made of that. Let's see how that looks. 
Now with the letterbox on top, that's going to look very different again. They won't have these edges. See if I find that clip. I think it's just here. There we go. Yeah. See how her wings with the strange kind of metal underneath. Um, so yeah, the, the effects are they're wide ranging. Um, you know, they're very creative. You can do loads of really interesting things with them. Um, but those, and I don't want to go into every single effect, but that's just how you apply them. It's just a couple of different uh, methods which can be useful. Using your your, um, your compound clip it can be good to, to apply effects to everything. Um, and being aware of the order in which your clip, your effects are layered and the impact that that can have on those. So yeah, so thank you very much for, for watching and hope that was useful and we'll catch you again next time.